there's a zillion books out there that talk about the business, but I, I would just suggest if, if you're interested in getting started, just, just take action, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody's situation is different. Um, you know, maybe you're working full time in your job or, or maybe you're looking for a career change. And, you know, again, get, getting back to, um, you know, maybe you have a spouse, maybe you don't have a spouse or a partner, a business partner, or not, it doesn't really matter. Just, just take action, right? I mean, I know um, you guys are located in Austin. There's, there's plenty of um, meetup events. You guys, I think, host one. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just go and surround yourself with those in the business and start absorbing everything you can. Hey there, welcome to Make It Rain, multifamily real estate investing for millennials. I'm Luke. And I'm Daisy. And with every episode, whether we're discussing a special topic or have an amazing guest, the goal is to provide education and resources for anyone interested in investing in multifamily real estate, especially if you're a millennial. Yes, we're excited to chat with you about the what, the whys, the hows, and the who's. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, everybody, to Make It Rain, multifamily real estate investing for millennials. This is Luke. Hey, and this is Daisy. Welcome back to another episode. And today we're excited to have Rob Overstreet on the show. Welcome to the show, Rob. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, and we were uh, just talking off, off uh, camera that, you know, your name keeps popping up, right? We have uh, quite a few friends in, in common within the industry. And so people kept recommending, you know, Luke and Daisy, you have to reach out to Rob. So excited to dig into your story um, today. And before we do get started, we always like to start with something a little bit more personal. So is there a childhood or adult nickname that your closest circle calls you that you can share with our audience? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I guess growing up, everybody called me Robbie. Um, you know, so that's that's probably my uh, my earliest nickname. And um, somewhere along the line, I thought it sounded a little more prestig- prestigious to just change it to Rob. You know, and just yeah. Um, it's kind of a funny story. A um, hundred years ago, I worked in the hospitality business. I worked for Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Mm. And um, so, if you I don't know if you've ever been, there's one yeah, in pretty yeah. much every major city, but Anyways, um, my name tag said Robbie and, um, I was working there through college and everything else. And, um, you know, Ruth's Chris, if you've been to one, their, their big deal is of course, you know, it's a steakhouse and wine and wine sales. And so, Mm -hmm. um, they gave us so much knowledge in, in wine. I mean, we were doing weekly wine tastings and I mean, I learned so much homework assignments. I mean, by the time I left the company, I, I probably could have passed the level one sommelier test. So wow. um, getting back to Robbie, uh, my name tag said Robbie and I would, I would step up and to a table or, you know, greet a guest and start talking about wine. And I felt like they weren't taking me seriously because Robbie is not a very good, you know, wine name, right? right. It's like, oh, hey, everyone listen up. Robbie's going to recommend a wine to us. You know, I, have a, I have a cousin named Robbie. He's 10 years old. You know, I'm just like, okay. So changed my name tag to Robert and my wine sales went through the roof. <laughs> oh, go. wow. Well, well, well yeah, then I have to of- ask, what is your favorite wine? Oh, boy. I've been out of the business a long time. I, you know. I guess, um, you know, Napa Valley puts out a lot of, you know, really good wines. Um, Stag's Leap, um, Dow out of um, the, kind of the Central Coast is another winery that I like. But I don't know. We, we have two kids now. And so um, my whining and dining days are kind of behind me while we <laughs> raise these these two kiddos. So yeah. anyways, but, we'll, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll be there soon enough with uh, just like you and your wife are. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. But we look at We'd love to hear you um, jump into your story and and kind of provide our listeners um, some background on on where you started out and, and how you got to where you are today, Rob. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'll take us back to college. You know, I, I grew up in Southern California, um, went to um, college at San Diego State where I studied economics. Um, during that time, I, I worked. I worked at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse for a long time and then uh, for a few years beyond. And um, you know, I, I was working for the company at some point during my tenure there, they, um, the company went public and, um, you know, they, they started expanding in most major metros across the country. They, they, you know, asked me if I would go, you know, travel and help open new stores and, mm-hmm. uh, train the new staff. And so, um, you know, there were definitely opportunities for me to advance within the company, you know, and management and beyond, but, um, Somewhere along the line, you know, I, I just, I always had the entrepreneur sp- spirit, right? And, you know, I was trading time for money working for a, a corporation 
And specifically in the hospitality business, I was trading the most important time for, for money, which is mm-hmm. nights, weekends, every holiday, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, my wife and I, we, you know, didn't have kids at the time. We we always wanted to have kids eventually and build our family. And um, and so it, it came to a point where I said, I, I, I need to look for something else. So yeah. um, from there, I, I started looking at different business opportunities. I actually um, purchased a franchise business of a Minuteman Press here in San Diego. And I operated that for many years. We grew sales um, 6X during my time as the owner. And um, s- somewhere along that uh, timeline, I-, I started to become interested in real estate investing. Um, and so while I was operating my franchise business, I started reading books, listening to podcasts, going to events, trying to network okay. with folks that were in the business and learn and just started taking baby steps. Um, you know, I was, I was like a sponge. I was reading every book I could get my hands on, listening to all the materials I could find and going to these events and, and um, started seeking mentors that I could kind of align myself with. And, you know, again, just one foot in front of the other. And it came to a point where we were at an event in the Bay Area, um, Northern California, a weekend long training, met some of my early mentors. They weren't, you know, it wasn't like a mentor mentee relationship at that time, but just some people that we kind of looked up to that had some uh, experience in real estate and apartment syndication specifically. And, um, you know, we just kept the dialogue open. We started, you know, talking more and more, started underwriting a lot of deals, started putting offers on deals, and eventually got the first one under contract and closed in Dallas, Texas. And from then on, Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I was bit by the bug and, uh, you know, I, I started sinking more time into my real estate business and it came to a point when, um, my time commitments to my franchise business as the, you know, operating owner with the full staff and my time commitments to my, you know, growing real estate business, they, they were kind of tugging at each other in opposite directions. Right. And so, yeah. um, you know, but my passion really lied in, in real estate investing. I could just see what the future held uh, for me, my family, you know, et cetera, with time freedom, financial freedom, the tax benefits that come along with, with the real estate investing business. And so um, with my wife, we decided that, you know, I would sell the franchise business and focus exclusively on real estate investing. And so that happened about mm-hmm. four years ago. So for the last four years, um, I've been full-time exclusively focused on real estate investing. Mm. I'd love to hear more about your, your, that conversation with your wife, Rob. I know, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs that are in this space, right? If they're not working directly with their spouse and they're not part of the business, it, it's so foundational to still have that support and have, you know, the, your partner, right? Being on the same page, which it sounds like for you selling your franchise and going, you know, full time into multifamily, which is another business, right? Uh, in itself is, was a huge step. What were those conversations like for, for you and your wife at that point? I feel very fortunate, very blessed. My wife and I have known each other a long time. We just celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary this year, oh, but um, <laughs> we dated for 10 years before that. So, wow. <laughs> so we, we, um, we've known each other a while and um, she's my, my life partner, my wife, you know, mother of our kids. And, um, um, you know, we, sh- she, um, has her own career. She's a school teacher, teaches fourth grade here in San Diego. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were looking at the, f- our future, right. And, mm. um, you know, once we really understood the power that comes with the, the, the investment vehicle of, of real estate. Um, and, and how bright the future looks if I was to go down that path and focus all of my energy into it. Um, we decided at that point that, you know, that was the best course for us to take. And, um, it was a decision we made together. Um, financially speaking, it was, um, you know, there was, there's, there's sacrifice involved with that. But again, fortunately, my, my wife has a full-time full income job. Um, you know, at that point when we decided to, to sell the business, um, we had already closed on, um, several real estate syndications, apartment deals, had a couple hundred doors under the belt that were cash flowing. So there was revenue from that. And, um, also the, the method by which I sold the business, I did carry some, some paper, some financing for the buyer. So, um, that produced an additional revenue stream, 
um, to, to help with the transition while, you know, I continue to focus on building the portfolio. Yeah, there's actually going to be a question that I, I figured was going to be burning in our listeners' uh, minds was, okay, so you you were working and had your own business and your own franchise business and you went full-time real estate. Like, how were the financials of it? But it sounded like, you know, and this is specifically for the listeners listening right now, like, see what Rob ended up doing. He already had a, an existing business that was doing well that he exited, right? But he ended up keeping a stake in it from a debt perspective. So that was that was income for you. You already had some some progress already with real estate. So it wasn't like, oh, I don't like what I'm doing. I'm just going to leave and just start with real estate, right? You already had some experience there. And then of yeah. course, you also had the in part the financial support of your wife as well. So, th- so you you were working from a pretty strong position to be able to continue to, to gain momentum and move forward is what it sounds like. Absolutely. And as far as, you know, the, 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 the compensation goes, I mean, it was, it was a calculated um, decision whereby, you know, we were going to live humbly. We always do and, and we'll continue to do so. But, um, you know, we looked at the budget um, and, and I definitely took a, a, a pay reduction from, you know, operating my business. But again, um, we want to get to our goals as quickly as possible. And mm. quite frankly, it was just going to take um, possibly 10 X longer if I was trying to operate, you know, my business full time and then, you know, focus on the real estate in any additional extra hours that I could find or squeeze in. And so, um, you know, we wanted to, to get to our goals sooner. And so, um, that meant, you know, some sacrifice and, and me, you know, going exclusively full time in, in real estate investing. So, um, and we, we haven't regretted the decision. Um, but you know, everybody's situation is different. So your listeners, yeah. you know, um, you know, I, I feel very fortunate that again, I have a partner in this and my wife, um, she's not, you know, active in the business. That's the, you know, I I'm the active, uh, real estate investor, but, um, she supports me, you know, emotionally, um, as, as well as, you know, supports the house with her financial contribution, along with, you know, these other income streams from the portfolio of real estate that we've acquired to date, along with, you know, um, some, some debt that, you know, I carried for the business that has paid, you know, revenue monthly and will continue to do so for a a couple more years in the future. So. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I think that's a, a huge component, right, of, you know, success and, and getting to where you want to be is, is making sure that your partner is on board and, and making them part of the process, right? It's not a retroactive uh, afterthought. I wanted to take it back a little bit uh, to when you started working. I know you mentioned you were young, you were in college, you know, you were working at a steakhouse and then from there, you know, went on to have your franchise uh, business and then from there moved on to the real estate, right? I'd love to hear what are some of those uh, skills skills and strengths that you received from having started working at a steakhouse? You know, you were very interactive with people. I would assume there's, you know, an influence there, but I'd love to hear for a lot of our listeners, maybe they're in a place where they're getting started, they're starting to learn about real estate. And so we always encourage them to focus on where you are now, what you have gained in terms of skills and strengths, and then being able to leverage that into real estate, whatever that strength is. What were those for you back in the day, Bob? Really, really great question, Daisy. Um, I've learned so much from my past experiences, both as a W-2 employee of a of a you know national hospitality chain of Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, as well as you know lots of lessons learned as a business owner of a kind of a traditional you know um, (laughs) brick and mortar business of you know Minuteman Press, and um, you know all the challenges that come with you know business ownership. The first thing that comes to mind, you know, at, at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, um, you know, I, I tell people I got a, a, a PhD in hospitality, right? <laughs> and, and that includes, you know, it, it, it sharpened my communication sword. Um, you know, I had to deal with um, the public, you know, every day and talking with people, understanding their needs, creating an exceptional experience every time they came into one of our restaurants. And um, Ruth's Chris had this thing, they... They, you know, very data driven and everything else, especially when, you know, after they, they took the company public. Um, and they told us one time that the average guest at a Ruth's Chris Steakhouse comes in once per year, which means wow. um, you have one shot 
and don't blow it. Right. And so, um, they were constantly, constantly educating the staff on best practice and hospitality and communication. I think that translates well into the real estate business because, you know, as you guys know, it's, it's the communication business, communicating, uh, often with our investors, uh, both current investors and our prospective investors, educating people on that and, and really being able to communicate the message. Um, and, and so, um, I would say, you know, the, the communication skills developed um, when I worked in the restaurant field, um, you know, has ha- has helped me in my my real estate, you know, career. As far as you know, when I transitioned into business ownership, um, one thing that sticks out, I I was a member for a long time while I owned that business of a of a networking group called uh, BNI Business Network International. Have you guys heard of this? Or? I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was basically this. Um, a, a weekly meeting with my fellow BNI mates um, for breakfast before business got started for the day. We'd meet at like from seven to eight thirty or something mm-hmm. every single week, and um, there was a lot of training and things involved with BNI. But the one thing that I'll never forget, um, actually, two things that BNI taught me. First of all, their mantra was "Givers gain, givers gain," right? And so when you think about that you know, you have to give before you receive. Right. And so, um, we've, we've applied that principle in our business. You know, we, we like to give, we like to teach, educate. I give time, you know, people that are interested in the business or just getting started or, you know, I I'm not the, you know, the most expert guy in our, our space. I, I work on that every single day and will continue to work on that my entire real estate career. But I do have some experience that I'm, you know, I'm willing to share any resources or experiences that I've, you know, had, you know, in the, in the business um, with anybody that's willing to listen. Um, so, you know, givers gain. And then the other one is um, that B and I always talked about was VCP, visibility first, then comes credibility, then comes profitability. Mm. So you, you guys, you guys running your podcast. Um, check the, the the visibility box, right? I mean, you guys are out there educating people, um, uh, you know, through your your podcast channel. Um, that lends to your credibility. People view you as credible, you know, resources in in the space, um, knowledgeable. We can rely on Daisy and Luke, and I can call them, and they know what they're doing. And so, visibility, right? The podcast credibility yeah. because you're you're talking with you know various people in the space and educating people. Um, and then the last one, it lends itself to, to profitability, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, that principle can be applied in any business, not just real estate, but, um, you know, those are, those are a few of the things that I've learned, you know, in my various jobs and (laughs) businesses. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome because it's not only from the perspective of employee, but also employer and you had, you had tangible things along the way and they're, and they're, and they're pretty different things as well. Right. They all yeah. lead in the same direction generally, but, um, but there are those different skill sets that you can translate into whatever you're doing next. Um, speaking of that, so you, you talked about like kind of educating yourself, catching the bug. Um, you correct me if I'm wrong, you know, when you ended up starting, did you start on the active side or you start on the passive side? Like, how did you, what was the, the very first piece of real estate that you really got involved with and how did that specific part of your journey begin, Rob? So one of the earliest trainings that I went to was hosted by, um, RE mentor, real estate mentor. Mm-hmm. The, the, um, the main guy there is, um, you've probably heard of him, David Lindahl. He's written a couple of books. He wrote a great book called Multifamily Millions. It's a fantastic foundational book for anyone that you know, is looking to get started in the business. But I started you know, kind of going to some of his weekend boot camps and, and educational and networking events. And they host these throughout the country around the calendar. Um, and one thing uh, Lindahl always talks about is um, the sooner you go bigger, the better, you know, so, so go big as quickly as you can buy the biggest apartment you feel comfortable with mm. as, as soon as possible and call it blind ambition or, or maybe a little bit of recklessness. I don't know, but we really... That, said, okay, go big or go home. So we, <laughs> we just jumped right in. I mean, to this day, I've never flipped a house. I mean, at some point I'd like to, you know, I know a lot of people get started, you know, um, 
using burr methods and, and house flipping. And then they graduate into multi I mean, we, we just jumped straight in to, mm -hmm. to apartments. I mean, the first deal was um, 79 units in Dallas. Then we did a 120 door in Indianapolis and a 132 unit portfolio in Cincinnati. And it was just, you know, one after another. And we just, we, 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 we went for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, the, the first deal was, was that Dallas deal. And like I said, then, you know, like you mentioned, Luke, I, I was just bit by the bug and we wanted to get another one followed by another one. And, and that's how we got started. Um, you know, as, as far as active versus passive, all the deals that we've done, I've been on the general partnership side, um, which has given me so much experience. I mean, learning, um, and, and having the dialogue and the conversations with the securities lawyers, the, the, the transaction lawyers, understanding SEC, you know, Reg D and, and how a syndication is structured and works and everything. I mean, it's, it's one thing to read in a book, and, but the, the experience gained from actually doing it um, is invaluable. So, um, you know, all of our deals, we've, we've all been on the, the, the active side. Um, now, you guys know, it's not like it's, it's just me. And by the way, I have a, a, a business partner in this, um, also in San Diego, um, that, you know, the two of us are Harbor Drive Holdings. Um, but as you guys know, all of these deals have various partnerships, right? I mean, it's not just Harbor Drive doing deals. We always, you know, partner with with other, you know, companies, real estate entrepreneurs, whatever, you know, that with or without experience, because it, it takes a village to get one of these things across the finish line, as you guys yeah. know. So, yeah. um, you know, it, aligning yourself with partners, networking with potential partners, others in the business that have, you know, experience or or not, um, but you know that align with your values, your your ethical standards. You know that 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 is critically important if you want to jump onto the active side. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, mm -hmm. yes, we and we talk about that all the time. I'm I'm glad that you bring that up too, yeah. Rob. Right, is that you know partnerships? It, it takes a while, right? You want to make sure that you know someone, you understand their values, and you know is that something that they're really living by? Uh, you know how do they you know react to situations outside of real estate, outside of business? Like all of that is so so important, right? Um, so really understanding, of course, you know the the actual vehicle of, you know, what you're doing business in, which is the multifamily real estate side, but also on the partnership side, right, who you're working with and, and engaging in these long term relationships with. Um, so I'd love to hear from you, what is your role specifically uh, within Harbor Drive Holdings? And why Harbor Drive Holdings? Why? How did the name come come about for you and your partner? <laughs> well, um, my role currently is um, primarily focused on investor relations and um, um, educating the investors. Um, you know, I, I, I go on and, and guest you know, appearance on podcasts and, um, you know, help design and engineer kind of the, the, the funnels for, you know, finding new investors that may be interested in our product offering. Um, and then my partner is focused currently uh, mostly on deal acquisition as well as asset management of the portfolio. Now, in a small business, um, in any industry, real estate or otherwise, um, and you guys, I'm sure know this. Um, there's there's plenty of overlap. You know, I mean, I'll still look at deals. <laughs> I'll still help with underwriting deals. It's not like I stay in my lane. I mean, it's a small business. We're growing our our, our business and our portfolio, and so, um, you know. Um, just because I'm wearing this hat and you're wearing that hat doesn't mean that we can't switch hats every once in a while. So, <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of my, my current role. Um, and, um, forgive me, I forgot the second half of the question. Yeah. Why, why Harbor Drive Holdings? How Harbor Drive Holdings. Yes. Yeah. So, um, um, my partner in the business, uh, we've known each other a long, long time. We've been, you know, he's, he's also an entrepreneur and, and an investor himself and, um, he was, um, in management at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse when we met close to 20 years ago wow. and we became friends. We had various, um, um, investment strategies, equities, some other, you know, investing deals that we would always discuss. And, yeah. um, he was also a, you know, a business owner of a couple different businesses. And, um, we kind of started walking the path of real estate, uh, together, um, and, and, eventually decided that we were going to start Harbor Drive Holdings. And so the significance of the name is because the, the Ruth's Chris Steakhouse that we both met at and was kind of our home base restaurant uh, was in San Diego on Harbor Drive. 
which um, if you've been to San Diego, there's, there's the Harbor. It's right. You know, if you land, the airport is right on the, the San Diego Bay, the Harbor <laughs> there yeah. and Harbor drive is this beautiful Boulevard that, that just kind of wraps all the way around the Bay, right on the water. And there's lots of restaurants, beautiful views, you know, obviously the weather and everything. So Harbor drive is kind of a, a main street in the downtown and Harbor areas of San Diego. And Ruth's Chris address was on Harbor Drive. We said, well, let's call it Harbor Drive Holdings. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. something that's cool about that is like it's uh it's true to who you are, right? Like it 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 speaks to it and and it, it it's just a fit, is what it sounds like. Um yeah. speaking of fit, you you had talked a little bit about values. I will, I'd be interested to hear what what you feel like your values are and what you end up looking for in, in partners, right? And then whether they're passive partners or even active partners that you end up going on, on these deals with? I mean, you know, our, our values are, are focused in our relationships, you know, and, and there's lots of different categories of relationship, right. Um, you know, our, our, our passive investing partners, um, you know, um, building and nurturing our relationship with our passive investors is, is, um, critically important and understanding what their financial goals are, uh, for themselves, for their families, having open and often communication with our investing partners. Um, you know, so, um, and then of course there's relationships with, um, our, you know, active partnerships, right? So, um, co GP relationships, both current and prospective, right? We're always looking to network with other operators and, um, get to know them, get to know their values again, open communication, um, you know, and, and, um, understand if, if, um, it's a right fit for them, if it's a right fit for us. And so, um, you know, uh, so relationships with the passive investors, relationships with the active investors, and then of course our, our, our broker and third party relationships, right. Um, you know, we've spent, um, a tremendous amount of time and effort and resources and fostering and nurturing our, our investor, I'm sorry, our, our broker relationships in the markets that we've identified we want to invest in. And um, they're the, the ones that feed us deals. They're the ones that um, go fight for us to get the contract, you know, and, and it all starts with, with building those trusting and, you know, relationships with the brokers, because, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you blow up a deal with a broker, it's going to be very difficult to um, repair that relationship. So we take that um, very seriously, do what we say we're going to do and, um, and come through in the end and, and, you know, just continue to, to nurture all those relationships. So. Yeah, I think that really highlights what, what you said at the beginning, right? It is a team sport and, you know, there is so much, uh, you know, to multifamily real estate that you want to partner with other people. It's, it would be a little crazy, you know, to be able to take everything on yourself. Right. Um, and of course it wouldn't be as fun. Right. I think that's the other side of it too. It's, you know, you've mentioned a lot of relationships, uh, networking, getting to know other people. And so much of what we do is that, right. It's building that like trust and, you know, people feel comfortable, right. Coming to you as an expert you've positioned yourself in that way. Um, but something that I wanted to highlight as well, Rob, is that, you know, in our conversation and, and what I've known about you uh, from different people in the industry is that you come across very genuinely. And I say that most sincerely, right? That, you know, I'm, we're speaking to you now, you know, other people that have referred us to you and, you know, there's no um, malintent or, you know, other, um, you know, uh, I don't know, other than intent, what the right word would be, but um, just very genuine. How do you uh, foster that? Do you realize that that is something that is a skill set of yours? And, and if so, how has the, how have you developed that in your, in your personal life? Um, really good question. You know, I, I you, we've all heard this. I, I know you guys have heard this, you know, just, just be yourself, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're all people at the end of the day. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I like to, I like to talk, <laughs> I, li I like to, I like to meet people. I like networking and, you know, learn about, you know, you, your background and, and I, I don't know, it just, it's something that I guess that just comes naturally to me. And, and I appreciate those kind words, Daisy, you know, I, I don't know who you're talking to that's telling you this stuff. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, but, um, no, I, you know, I, I, it just uh, talking to people, I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess a bit of an extrovert, you know, I, I, I don't mind, you know, going up on stage. I don't mind just walking up to a, 
a closed group of folks in a circle at a networking event to introduce myself. You know, I just, I just like talking about the business. I like to educate people, um, you know, almost, almost to a fault. I mean, you know, we, we, I get calls every week from people interested in getting started on the active side. And I'm, I'm happy to spend as much time on the phone because I just genuinely like the business and I like helping people. So, um, you know, you can call me anytime you can text me, uh, you know, if I have something that you don't have, I'm happy to give it to you. It's just, you know, again, I think it, some of it goes back to just givers gain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we've all started someplace and someone helped me along the way. And I, I just want to help as many people as I can, um, either on the active side or the passive side. So um, in terms of helping people on the on the passive side, right? Or people who want to be on the active side, I'm thinking of a lot of our audience, they're younger, they're millennials. You know, they might be early on in the career, they might be hitting, you know, sort of mid-career maybe. Um, what sort of advice would you give to them if they're looking to get started within real estate and specifically within multifamily, Rob? Yeah, it sounds cliche, but just take action, get started, get started right now, today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and, and what does that look like? Get started, Rob. You know, where do I start? Right. I, I don't know anything about multifamily. Well, um, in today's world, and, and it just continues to improve, there, there's there's a, a mountain of information, fantastic podcasts like yours. Um, that you can listen to and, and just just take you know baby steps, get educated, read books. Um, like I mentioned, Multifamily Millions. If, if you're interested in getting started, that is a fantastic mm-hmm. book. If you guys, you know, have, have you read it or have you heard of it? Um, no, it's not one that I've heard personally. Yeah, yeah. Multifamily Millions, David Lindahl. He, you know, it, it's just a great book because it it breaks down the X's and O's from top to bottom of how exactly to identify, you know, a multifamily deal, how to underwrite a multifamily deal, how to negotiate it, how to operate it, how to, you know, exit, um, things to look out for, you know, things to look for. It's just, and and it breaks it all down in very simple terms, but, um, there's a zillion books out there that talk about the business, but I I would just suggest if, if you're interested in getting started, just, just take action. Right. Um, and everybody's situation is different. Um, you know, maybe you're working full time in your job or, or maybe you're looking for a career change and, you know, again, get, getting back to, um, you know, maybe you have a spouse, maybe you don't have a spouse or a partner, a business partner or not, it doesn't really matter. Just, just take action. Right. I mean, I know, um, you guys are located in Austin. There's, there's plenty of, um, meetup events. You guys, I think host one, yeah. um, you know, just, just go and surround yourself with those in the business and start absorbing everything you can. Um, you know, find a mentor. That's, that's one that we did that I think was, um, the biggest key for our success initially was, and, and, and just getting us started, right. The kickstart was, um, finding a partner, having some commonality, providing value. And, um, you know, if you, if you just take the baby steps, next thing you know, you guys are going to be doing deals together. So, Yes, I love that. I mean, you know, people ask us all the time, like, how did the whole process of moving from Southern California to Texas for multifamily happen? And it didn't happen right from one day to another. We started, like you said, right, reading, you know, books, listening to podcasts, going to in-person meetups. And after, you know, a while, we invested passively. And after, you know, we kind of reverse engineered, similar to your wife and you, Rob where we wanted to be. And from there realized, okay, what is it going to take? It's going to take us, you know, packing up our car, driving across the country and moving to Texas. Right. So that's what we did, but that's not where we started. So I like that you, you know, focus on starting small and starting where you are and building from there. We would have never in a million years imagined, right, that we'd be here talking to you, hosting a podcast, you know, doing multifamily on the active side and the, you know, passive side. So I think wherever you are, that's, that's always my biggest takeaway and message, right, is, is do something, start where you are, and you just be open to know where you're headed, but be open to the universe in terms of how you get there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think um, some people that are interested in getting started in the active side could get paralyzed by just the amount of information they may or may not know about the business because the, yes. the, the, the it, it's it can be complicated, but it, it doesn't have to be right. You don't need to know everything. Just surround yourself with with experts in particular categories, and and just just take action. Just get started today. Start right now. 
<laughs> I love it. Yep. I love okay. it. Um, yeah. So as we start to, to wrap up, Rob, I'd love to hear from you. What do you feel is your biggest contribution to the world thus far? I think we covered some of it. You know, I, I just, I, I like to um, give to people. So, um, you know, I, I get calls all the time um, every week uh, from, from people with a variety of, you know, experience in the space and s- some even with more experience than me. And so, you know, flip the table around. It's like, I want to <laughs> learn from you, but um, just, just giving, giving to our, you know, investors, giving to our prospective investors, right. Interested in just learning. Um, you know, we, we do our best to, you know, create new content and um, in the way of our, our monthly newsletter for our investor community and the way of our, our um, YouTube uh, videos, you know, we, we try to publish new videos on, on our YouTube page often, you know, that, that provide little nuggets and things and just, you know, talking to people. I mean, you can pick up the phone, call me right now, I'll, I'll pick it up and we can have a conversation and how I can help you. So Love probably you. biggest contribution, just, just giving outwardly to, to anybody. Nice. Awesome. And, and speaking of picking up the phone, um, if our, if our listeners are interested in reaching out to you, learning more about what you're doing, how can they end up doing that, Rob? Yeah. Phone email. Um, phone is uh, 760-550-1912. Um, <laughs> and um, just don't call me Robbie. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, and um, you know, email's good as well. Rob at harbordriveholdings.com. Or you can check out our website. There's lots of cool resources there. Um, HarborDriveHoldings.com. Um, you know, all the usual stuff, YouTube, Facebook. I mean, just go search it. You, you'll find me someplace. LinkedIn is a good one. I, I'm, I'm fairly active on LinkedIn as well. So. Awesome. Awesome. And I have to share that you made my heart happy with the 760. I'm from Victorville, California. Oh, yeah. So we have oh, the wow. same the same area. Yeah. Code. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things, you know, you, you never change your phone number since exactly. high school. I don't know. You know, like now I'm surrounded by a bunch of 858s and 619s. So it's like, 760, where's that? I grew up in um, just east of San Diego in a, a rural community called Imperial Valley. Lots of agriculture. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so if you're if you're familiar, it's a, you know desert climate, so hot summers and cold winters, very little precipitation. But you know, two hours from San Diego, it was kind of a natural fit when I decided where to go to school. You know, just be close to family and for sure. Um, but, but still far enough away that I, yeah. felt like I had a <laughs> college experience. You know, so. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, I, yeah, I just had to share because I, you know, my face kind of changed too, when you said seven, six, oh, um, yeah. but as we wrap up, I, I have to ask, you mentioned you have two little ones. Yes. What do they think dad does? What is their perception of what you do on a, on a day to day? Well, my daughter, our oldest, she's almost six. She starts kindergarten this week, which is just huh. like, just, right? <laughs> I mean, I, we can't believe it. It just time flies. And then my son is, um, he'll be turning two in a couple of months. We have a almost six-year-old and an almost two-year-old. Um, so he's a little too young to, you know, understand at this point, but um, my daughter is, is funny. She's, you know, my, my dad's an investor, you know, she, they, in her preschool, they had this, um, for father's day, one of those like questionnaires where kids write funny things, you know, um, you know, for work, my dad does, and she wrote investments. So, oh, uh, wow. like, you know, <laughs> there you go. but, um, you know, she, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's hard at times because it, you know, as, as you guys know, there's, there's, you know, a fair amount of travel involved with the business. Um, you know, I was in Houston a couple of weeks ago, I was in Indianapolis a, a couple of weeks before that, um, always looking at new opportunities and looking at deals to bring out to our investor community. And, um, and so when, when I leave, you know, it's always a little rough on the kids and she says, okay, dad, you know, you're going out to look at some apartments. And I said, yep, you know, I'll be back in a few days. So, <laughs> um, but you know, I, we, we talk about the business, we talk about investing and, and finance, um, and she's starting to understand it. We, we just hosted a, a lemonade stand. This is kind of a funny story. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this quickly, but, um, I had this big thought that, you know, oh, I'm going to teach her some entrepreneurship, right? Let's do a lemonade stand. And so, um, some of our neighbors in the community wanted to participate, you know, two little girls that my daughter is friends with and say, so, okay, great. So I get with her dad and say, okay, we're going to have a board meeting and we're going to create a business plan, you know, and how are we going to market this? And it, it, some of the concepts, <laughs> the kids are just a little too young. 
um, it kind of flew over their head. They're like, well, we just want to sell lemonade, you know? And I'm like, no, we need a business plan, you know? And my wife was making fun of me. It was really funny. Um, but, um, you know, just, I, I want to make sure that, like, as the kids are growing up, that they understand that, you know, there's mm-hmm. alternative ways to, um, create passive streams of income and, um, and continue to focus and, and grow their wealth. That way, you know, they, they are equipped with the ideas and the tools to, um, help themselves and their family. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But what an awesome example, you know, because yeah. I mean, sure. It might be over her head now, but I bet you that's the first time she's ever heard business plan in her life. You know, I mean, yeah. that's, that's it better to, to do a little too much than, than not enough. That's kind of where my head goes, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. They had a great time and it was a success. We promoted it and everything, but yeah, it was like, I, I, I printed out this kind of business plan and we were writing things down about, you know, how you market research, you know, for lemonade oh, wow. and, and R and D and stuff. And my <laughs> wife is behind me just like, are you nuts? You know, they're, they're too little, you know, and I'm like, well, I don't know. I just, I, I want them to start thinking about these things, you know, that, um, you can be a business owner, you know, someday and, and, um, just, just kind of spark that, you know, entrepreneurial spirit early, um, so anyways, bye. yes, I love that. Well, kudos to you. I'm, I'm, you know, excited to hear where, where her entrepreneurial journey goes and, you know, what, what beautiful way to be exposed, right. Then, you know, from your father, from your family, from mm-hmm. seeing, you know, build a business and, and be able to do that intentionally, right. Helping others and doing for yourself and your family, of course, but also helping your, you know, you mentioned community quite a few times, right. Helping your investor community, your partners and, and everybody that's, that's around you. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. well, yeah, we, we appreciate your time, Rob, and, and all of your insights and um, looking forward to seeing the, the progress that you continue to make um, here with, with everything that you're doing. Um, but with that, that wraps up another episode of Make It Rain, multifamily real estate investing for millennials and make it rain, make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening. The best way to show support is to share it with anyone who might benefit from it and leave us an awesome review. Follow us on Instagram at Make It Rain Podcast and check us out on our website at MakeItRainPodcast.com for more goodies. Take action on your financial future today. See you on the next episode. See you soon.